Okay, in this Roll20 video, we're going to talk about how height affects dynamic lighting. Uh, by that I mean climbing, uh, flying, floating, levitating, teleporting, uh, being thrown by your Goliath friend. Um, whatever means you use to get on top of something, which would allow you to see on either side of blocking terrain. Now, as of the time of this video, April 2020, there are not any native useful tools in Roll20 that allow this to happen. Uh, there's no um, variance in player levels. There's no way to toggle on or off um, certain sections of dynamic lighting for certain characters. Uh, there's just not a elegant way to do it. So I'm going to show you how I've been doing it and show you a pretty fancy way to do it and you can kind of decide what you want to do. So right now I'm in John Fletcher's miniature. So I've done control L so I could see through it. Uh, he and Cam have snuck up on this tower and are trying to investigate. They are being sneaky, uh, whatever that means in your fifth edition game. So he's going to peek around the corner and see two goblins. All right, he's going to move down here. He's going to peek around the corner again, two goblins. Okay, he decides I am going to climb the tower, get the high ground, and then I could do my archer thing from up top. So he makes some athletics checks, he climbs up the tower, boom, he's at the top of the tower wall. The tower is ruins, there's no roof or anything, so he's kind of balanced up there on the wall, getting ready to take his shots. Um, now he should be able to see past that wall, right? Well again, there's no way to turn the wall off, right? Dynamic lighting is either all on or all off. So how do we get John to see it? He can't move his mini through the wall uh, because it's block of terrain. So as the DM, I have to step in and kind of move his miniature over so he can see the other side of the wall. Well, now he sees that there's a giant boar sleeping on the other side of the wall that he couldn't see before. Um, and he can see the goblins and everything. If we go back into John's mini, we can see that, yeah, he sees the interior of the tower, but now he can't see the rest of the adventuring party. Um, it's a real pain to shift his mini back and forth uh, because, you know, he can't move through the blocky terrain. He could do it himself by looping around the difficult terrain over and over again. But, like, how can we make it so he could see on both sides at the same time? Well, uh, the simplest solution is to just duplicate John. So, if we select John and do Control c and then do Control v there are now two Johns. Uh, now, each of these Johns will be able to see and the player who controls John can see through both tokens at the same time, they'll be able to see on both sides of the wall. Cool. Um, that's a great solution, but now there's people that are going to be like, which John's the real John? And you say, well, John's on the thing. So you could go ahead and grab one of the Johns and mark it with a red dot, say the red dot John is the real John, the other John is just for looking around, and call it a day. Uh, you could also go to the secondary John, hold down Alt, and scale him down to be a little tiny, little John. And you could say, obviously, the full-size John with the red dot is the real John. All the other Johns that you see, the little Johns, those are just him being able to look around. Again, that's a solution. Um, could we do better than that? Uh, yeah, we could. So if you're willing to put in a little bit more work, uh, you could make a token that is just for your characters, or your player characters to see things. So in this case, I've made John Vision, right? So if I, and only John sees it, it's got a little dot for John. Um, it's only gonna be in his uh, journal, so it shouldn't clutter everybody's up. If I drag this John eyeball in, uh, and it's labeled so the players can see, hey, this eyeball isn't a beholder or anything crazy like that. It's just, it's just John climbing on stuff again. And to demonstrate, uh, we'll go ahead and switch over to player view. And I'm set up to have John Fletcher as my only player character, so I'm not going to see through Chamomile's eyes, only John's. So let me rejoin as a player real quick. All right. And we'll scroll down, take a look. All right, there we go. You can see that the blocking terrain from uh, dynamic lighting is still in place, but now because John is at the top of this wall and he has a vision token, he can see on both sides of the wall without uh, too much hassle. Now let's say that John, for whatever reason, had boots of flying or 
um, I don't know, a potion of flying, where somebody cast flight on him. And he wanted to fly high enough that he could see the whole map, right? So we would, of course, toggle on uh, a flight marker so we know that he's flying. And then maybe he flies, uh, we'll say, right above the whole tower. But he wants to be able to see everywhere. Well, that's pretty simple. Uh, we just keep dragging out more vision tokens to make sure that he can see uh, the whole map. There we go. So since he's flying up high, he'll be able to see everything that's coming from every direction, since there's no roof on this building. Um, so using these tokens, you can uh, affect the areas that people can see without it getting too confusing with um, multiple uh, copies of, of PC heroes running around, that sort of thing. Um, I myself am going to switch over to this method uh, moving forwards, and uh, at least until a better native tool set uh, comes along that can uh, make all this happen for us. Uh, but for now, it definitely gets the job done. So uh, there you go. That is how you handle um, all that jazz. As a bonus, um, some people might say, how do you keep track of height while you're flying? Um, so how do you keep track of flight while you're flying? Uh, generally in my group, we just say increments of like 10 feet. So if John was flying 90 feet in the air, we just put a nine there. Um, and of course, when you mouse over a token marker while you're mousing over it, whatever number you hit is the number that will appear there. Unfortunately, it doesn't go higher than nine. So like flight, we'll say 10 would be 100 feet in the air. Um, when you start going higher than that, uh, yeah, we don't really have a good way of tracking that, uh, unfortunately. Most fights, nobody ever goes higher than 100 feet in the air. Um, but generally, you know, have the players keep track of their heights uh, kind of thing and remind you of it. If it's super important, you could always just use the marker tool and just write uh, what height they're at to remember. There are some token packs you can purchase uh, that have all sorts of, like... Um, height things right so this is like terrain and it has numbers for the terrain here's flying and it's got numbers for the flying uh here's burrowing and it's got numbers for the burrowing and here's submerged underwater and it's got numbers for that too pretty cool adds a lot of tokens to your um to your mix you definitely want to make sure they were all the way at the bottom um these particular ones uh, but even in like a super high level game running all the way to 20, where everybody's flying all the time. Um, I don't know if these tokens would have helped that much more than just the method we currently use, but that is a way to do it. Um, so yeah, height uh, and dynamic lighting in Roll20. Hopefully that will help you out in your games, and I will see you in the next video.